And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy, and I am very excited to talk to you about the new DCU that James Gunn just announced. Now, a lot of you might think that I hate DC because I've been so critical of the recent movies, but I've been critical because I love DC comics, and I want to see a cohesive universe on screen that is faithful to these stories that I love. James Gunn even said, quote, the history of DC is pretty messed up. I mean, guys, look, in the last four months alone, Henry Cavill has been, to quote James Gunn, dicked around by the former regime at Warner Brothers. Gunn would go on to tell reporters that no one was minding the mint. They were giving away IP like they were party favors and any creator who smiled at them. Oh man, so wait, is there going to be another DC connected universe? We already got the Snyderverse, the Jokerverse, the Batmanverse, the Arrowverse, and the DCEU. Plus, you know, whatever Shazam is doing. Well, buddy, I'm going to explain all that, but first, here's the thing. James Gunn and Peter Safran were hired to create a single franchise like the MCU. He said this would spread across movies, TV, animation, and gaming, but kind of like the Marvel What If stories, there can still be other side universes, like Todd Phillips' Joker movies and shows like Superman and Lois. But this does mean that the main movie slash TV universe is being reset, and that all starts with Flashpoint. What's a Flashpoint? Oh, man, it's this kick-ass story from the comics. Basically, Barry Allen wants to stop his mom from being murdered back when he was a kid, so he travels back in time to stop this from happening. And this has all sorts of unforeseen consequences, like Bruce Wayne dies and Thomas Wayne becomes a vicious murdering Batman, so Barry has to set things right. But when he does, the world is still different, and this gave rise to a new line of DC Comics called the New 52. There were some really great stories from this era, and actually, Snyder's Justice League lineup was inspired by these comics. Well, that all sounds very familiar. That's because they did a version of this story on the Grant Gustin TV show, which changed the Arrowverse. Oh yeah! And the trailer even hinted that they might might change the universe so like Michael Keaton became Batman instead of Ben Affleck. And Gunn confirmed that the Flash movie is a reset to the DCEU. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. James Gunn also called the Flash movie probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. And they refused to say if Ezra Miller would return after their recent legal troubles, only that they're getting better and receiving treatment. So the first few releases of the DCU are holdovers and previous projects. Next month, Shazam Fury of the Gods is being released, and Gunn said, Shazam has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU. Now see, for years, DC Comics have featured these what-if stories called Elseworlds, like what if the Waynes adopted Clark Kent, and Superman became Batman, etc. So projects like the Batman, the Joker, Teen Titans Go, and Superman and Lois will all be part of those Elseworlds stories separate from the DCU. Now I'm pretty sure in the announcement that Gunn said that the upcoming Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 would be part of the DCU as well. Move into Blue Beetle, who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects. So, post-Flash reset, not every actor has to be recast. We might even see Gal Gadot return as Wonder Woman, which we're going to discuss in a bit. But first, guys, if you like what we do here and you want to support our channel, we have a merch store with some awesome t-shirts for you to look at. Over at shopzeroedition.com slash screencrush, we have this original trilogy t-shirt, the Not The Be shirt. Doug appears on an ornament here. And one of my personal favorites, the Top 5 shirt, where you can write in your very own Top 5 movies with a Sharpie marker. Just check out the link in the description below. They're great shirts, very high quality, and it really does help support our channel. So now let's talk about these new projects. Gunn said, This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this is a very interesting theme for this first chapter of the DCU because it was actually the theme of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Throughout that movie, Luther is always calling Superman a monster or a demon and saying he's going to be like Prometheus, stealing fire from the gods and bringing it to the people. But now a similar theme might be explored across a whole phase. Gunn and Saffron said that one of their strategies is to take take their diamond characters, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and use them to prop up other characters that people don't know. And they just announced a lot of people and projects that people don't know. Like Creature Commandos, a seven-episode animated series written by James Gunn. Now, this team was originally about a team of classic monsters, a werewolf, a vampire, a gorgon, and Frankenstein, who all teamed up to fight humanity's greatest monsters, the Nazis. They first appeared in Weird War Tales in 1971, and got their own kick-ass comic in May 2000 with Attack on All Fronts. Now, the comic is a horror spin on history in World War II based comics such as Captain America and Wonder Woman. The animated series is going to be kind of a modern day update to that premise, and they're looking for voice actors who will also portray the characters in live action, kind of like Katie Sackhoff does for Bo-Katan in The Clone Wars and The Mandalorian. Now, one of the team members is Rick Flagg Sr. He's the father of the Rick Flagg that we met in The Suicide Squad. The other heroes are Nina Mazursky, Dr. Phosphorus, who's a Batman villain, Frankenstein, that's Eric Frankenstein, and the Bride of Frankenstein, who's the lead. And there's also G.I. Robot and Weasel. You remember Weasel. 
Yo, is this a dog? Next up is a show called Waller, a spinoff of James Gunn's brilliant Peacemaker TV show. Viola Davis was perfectly cast as Waller in Suicide Squad, so keeping her on is a no-brainer. The show's going to feature Harcourt, Die Beard, Letty, and the rest of the Peacemaker squad on a new Black Ops caper. It's being co-created by Jeremy Carver, who created the epic Doom Patrol series. Well, it pains me to say this, but you look awesome. Bro, moisturizer and by Cristal Henry, who is a writer in the greatest DC series ever made, Watchmen. And they are still making Peacemaker Season 2. The Waller Show is happening between Seasons 1 and 2. And the first brand new project in the DCU is one that I am most excited for, Superman Legacy. Superman is my favorite hero. His story is rooted in tragedy and genocide, yet he always sees the best in humanity. I just wish you could all see the Earth the way that I see it. Now there's a few things we know for sure. James Gunn is writing this movie. And we do know that it's not an origin story, though it does feature a younger Clark Kent. Peter Safran says it focuses on Superman balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. He is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way. He is kind in a world that thinks that kindness is old-fashioned. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just, I love Superman so much. The movie's going to be released on July 11, 2025, and I can't wait. Now, it's interesting that these were two of the first projects announced because Creature Commandos very much falls under that monsters part of Gods and Monsters, whereas Superman is always kind of looked upon as a god who treads on modern day soil. Now, for years, a Green Lantern Corps HBO series has been in the works, but now that's been scrapped. Instead, they're going to make a new series called Lanterns. Now, the Green Lanterns are basically like space cops, kind of like the Jedi with like a sector they're assigned to protect. There have been a few different Lanterns on Earth, including Hal Jordan and his first replacement, Jon Stewart. Or like the Daily Show. Nope, different Jon Stewart. This one. Now this series is going to focus on those two lanterns on a true detective style mystery that is based on Earth, you know, even though they're space cops. Peter Safran said this plays a really big role in leading into the main story that we're telling across film and TV. Now I'm going to guess that whatever they're investigating on Earth has repercussions on the cosmic side. This is what I'm most excited for in the DCU. It's not to see more Earth-based stories about Batman, it's to see them stretch their legs and really get into the weirdness of DC Comics out in outer space. Where's my Adam Strange movie? Now one announcement that probably caught people off guard is the authority. James Gunn is really excited about this one. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. Basically, they're like a hyper-violent and extreme Justice League. They basically make the hard decisions to make the world a better place. James Gunn even compared them to Jack Nicholson's character in A Few Good Men. Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. Basically, in that movie, Nicholson's character is willing to bend and break the rules of the Marine Corps to make his soldiers tougher so they're better at protecting American borders. Now, there was also a spinoff of The Authority called Planetary, which is one of my all-time favorite comics, and I would love to see that adapt to the big screen or on a TV show. Next up is a new series called Paradise Lost, which is described as a kind of Game of Thrones prequel to the Wonder Woman movies, and not an adaptation of Milton's great epic work. Now this could mean that Gal Gadot will eventually return as Diana in the modern day, or maybe it won't. Or what's the show about? Well, Gunn says it's an origin story of how this society of women came about. He said, what are their politics like? What are their rules? Who's in charge? What are the games they play with each other to get to the top? Now the comic book storyline Paradise Lost was a two-part story arc by Phil Jimenez and George Perez back in Wonder Woman, issues number 168 and 169. When Diana refuses the crown of Themyscira, it kicks off a civil war on the island between the Themyscira and Amazons and their Bonham McDowell Amazon sisters. Now, Bonham McDowell is a fictional Egyptian Amazon nation located in the Middle East. It's actually the birthplace of the superhero Artemis. Now, here's some history about the Amazons. 3,000 years ago, there were two Amazon queens. Hippolyta and Antiope, who split the Amazon nation in two. Hippolyta and her Amazons settled on an island which became Themyscira. Now Antiope and her Amazons eventually settled in Egypt and built the city of Bada Magdal, which in their language translates to the Temple of Women. One of the Egyptian goddesses the Amazons worship protected their city with a giant sandstorm surrounding it, like how Themyscira is invisible to outsiders who come across it. I can see this series with a giant budget being huge and epic. Just imagine Game of Thrones, except with super-powered women fighting for control of a lost civilization. Now, originally, I was hoping that Robert Pattinson's Batman was going to be retconned into being the first movie of this DCU. <laughs> but he's still going to remain in his own universe. Instead, after The Flash rewrites reality, there's just going to be a different Batman. And this Batman is going to give us something that we have been lacking in all of our new Batman films, a Robin. Holy traffic jams! Robin has been around since Batman number one, and he is an integral part of this character. He is the counterbalance to Batman's darkness, and he shows Batman what he is fighting for. 
to make sure that no child has to ever again hold their parents' dead bodies in an alley. The movie is called Brave and the Bold, and it's going to star Damian Wayne as Robin. Damian Wayne from... Slap me around and call me Susan. No, that's Damian Wayans. Damian Wayne is Batman's biological son that he didn't know existed for the first eight to ten years of his life. He was raised as a little murderer and assassin by his mom, Talia al Ghul, and the League of Assassins. He butts heads with Batman because he was taught from a young age to kill and is left by his mother and grandfather with his dad who refuses to kill. They also announced that the movie was inspired by the classic Batman run by the great Grant Morrison. Now Grant Morrison actually co-created Damian with Adam Kubert. Morrison describes his Batman and Robin storyline as a reversal of the typical Batman-Robin dynamic with a more lighthearted and spontaneous Batman and a scowling, badass Robin. Now, this movie is actually going to be the introduction of the whole Bat family. Save Martha! This is a big mistake! Batgirl, Huntress, Nightwing, we're all gonna finally see these characters on the big screen. I mean, Huntress was kind of in Birds of Prey, but you know what I mean. So I guess they canceled Batman too. Hashtag fire James Gunn. No, man, the Batman is one of those Elseworld stories, and it's getting another sequel, now renounced to release on October 2nd, 2025. Awesome! So, a Batman and a Superman movie will be released in 2025, the same year as Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Good. 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 That was weird. Another project I've been hoping for for a long time is Booster Gold, and we are finally getting an HBO Max series about him. Now, Booster is a normal dude from the far future who took some super tech into the past to become a superhero. James Gunn has even said, It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. Now, the character is a lot of fun. He's kind of like an anti-Kang. Kang's ego is so big that he travels to the past to conquer it, but Booster goes into the past just because he wants to be somebody. And another project I'm extremely excited for is Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Now, Supergirl has had a couple different iterations in the comics. Most famously, she was Superman's long-lost cousin who survived the destruction of Krypton. Then, when Superman was rebooted in the 80s, she was reinvented as a shapeshifter named Matrix. But the premise of this movie is based on the excellent series by the great Tom King. So, in that series, they draw a sharp contrast between her and her cousin Kal-El. Kal-El was raised on a farm by loving parents, while Kara Zor-El, that's her Kryptonian name, she saw Krypton destroyed, and then she's sent to Earth to defend her baby cousin. But, by the time she arrives, he is already a famous hero. So now she's asking herself, why was I even meant to survive? What purpose do I have in the world? Gunn even said, quote, she was raised on a rock, a chip off of Krypton, and who watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life and then come to Earth. She is much more hardcore and not the Supergirl that we are used to. Mmm. Yes. Good. And finally, The Swamp Thing. So Swamp Thing is one of the greatest comic books ever written, particularly the Alan Moore run in the 80s. Now, the character began as a simple story about a scientist who turned into a monster, but Alan Moore's run reimagined The Swamp Thing as a living extension of nature inhabited by a human mind, and he is constantly running afoul of occult forces. The movie's going to be a horror film, showing the DCU will stretch off into different genres, and I'm betting that without a Disney board of directors to oversee this project, The Swamp Thing is going to get very scary and very dark. There have been a couple of Swamp Thing series series and an animated series, but this movie, if it's faithful, could potentially be Oscar worthy. And by the way, there are other Elseworlds projects that are apparently still being made. J.J. Abrams is producing a movie about a black Superman written by the great writer ta Coates. Teen Titans Go! is not going anywhere, and maybe movies like Fury of the Gods will still get sequels. So that's every new project announced so far, but apparently Chapter 1's going to have even more they haven't even announced yet. What are you most excited for? Are you disappointed about anything? Let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.